Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game Video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing exclusive information that I was fed just today by a source that has proven to be very reliable in the past. They first revealed to me that Vegas 7NM would indeed be coming to gamers, and this was later confirmed by another source of mine who indeed named the card as Radeon 7 and provided other critical details for the GPU. But the source that I'm talking about also let me know various details concerning the X570 platform, including the fact that AMD were supporting PCIe 4.0 and that AMD were targeting PCIe 4.0 for the older platforms as well. So that information obviously has turned out to be accurate, so I have a pretty good amount of faith in this source. So uh, today we're going to be discussing various AMD plans, including the release dates for various SKUs from AMD. And yes, that does include the Ryzen 3000 series from the company, along with some details from Intel. So we're gonna actually start things out with Intel first. The reason being because I actually have less information for uh, the Intel side of the equation, so it just makes sense to, well, begin with the quicker stories. Um, also, as a slight aside, I am slightly ill at the moment. I'm fighting off a cold, so if my voice is a bit off slash, you know, a bit weird, that's why. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna do my best to uh, get through the video with as smallest number of jump cuts possible, but just be aware that if my voice cracks or whatever, I am at the moment fighting uh, a slight cold. So we're only, <laughs> that does not progress to be worse because I have a really busy uh, filming schedule over the next week or two with product reviews and other bits and pieces, including uh, coverage of Metro Exodus and uh, ray tracing technology. Anywho, so let's start things out with Intel first thing. Just so we're all on the same page, uh, AMD first of all launched Ryzen, which uh, Intel then countered with the six core Coffee Lake, which then they refreshed for an eight core part, which is now the i9-9900K. That is the highest end SKU they currently have for the mainstream. It is, of course, based on the 14NM process, and we all know the issues that Intel have had with 10NM, so I'm not going to spend the next five minutes going through the history lesson there. But Intel's current plans for the desktop anyway do not include Ice Lake. I was told that instead, Intel will move towards Comet Lake, which will launch in the first quarter. That's what their target is, although it could slip a quarter to the second half of the year, uh, sorry, to the second quarter of the year, but they are currently targeting the first quarter for Comet Lake. We know some of the architectural improvements already from Intel themselves, which they've hosted various events which detail those. Uh, but crucially, for the desktop anyway, the highest end SKU will sport 10 processor cores and it will be based on the 10NM process. However, from what partners of uh, both companies have been told, uh, including OEMs and system integrators, it would appear that, well, Intel are just going to be behind AMD for this generation. Uh, to quote my source, it's just not enough. What Intel currently have told people from their pub from the roadmaps behind closed doors, it would appear that AMD are definitely going to have the advantage here. It's going to be interesting to see what single core performance is going to be like between the two platforms, and we're going to get more into AMD stuff in just a moment. But in terms of core count anyway and multi-thread performance, AMD will certainly have the advantage. Moving on to AMD. Uh, and well, there are three products which, of course, everyone has their eye on from the company. The first is the Ryzen 3000 series processors. The second is the X570 motherboards. Well, actually, the 500 series motherboards as a general concern. And then finally, AMD's Navi. Now, I am actually putting out another video very shortly concerning Navi and how it stacks up against NVIDIA from all we know. So this video is going to primarily focus purely on release date rather than performance and architectural stuff from the GPU. So, um, the original uh, source that I was told a while ago is that Navi was indeed going to launch uh, in July, but the uh, announcement was going to take place in June with either E3 or Computex. Uh, however, I was then told by another source, along with a couple of other websites were reporting, that this date had then been 
postponed, most likely to October or possibly later. In regards to the uh, Ryzen 3000 series though, all we know is an official thing from AMD that they want to get the, the CPUs out by around the second quarter. However, I have just been told by this source that there have been a couple of internal changes from AMD. So first of all, with Navi, one of the reasons that uh, 7NM, sorry, one of the reasons that Navi was supposedly going to be delayed into October was because of delays in manufacturing. Uh, essentially, we have TSMC, who of course, using the 7NM fabrication for uh, Navi, basically it was just being pushed to the limit. And I've been told that AMD have since put a lot of pressure on TSMC because they really want some competitor to NVIDIA's mainstream level of GPUs. As we all know, it won't be very long at all until the GTX 16 series comes to uh, the store shelves near you. So AMD right now are trying to get the products still released in July. In fact, they want to do a simultaneous release for the Ryzen 3000 series processors, the X570 platform, and finally Navi. And the release date that AMD are targeting is July the 7th. There's a couple of reasons why July 7th. One, because of 7NM and AMD kind of like the idea of it, a little bit like the Sonic 2 release date way back in the day. And also they consider it internally a quote lucky number. So they just are shooting for seven uh, for the 7th of July. I was told though that in regards to Navi, there is still a possibility that it could be delayed. Um, they're still uncertain about the manufacturing capabilities of uh, TSMC and they're really pushing uh, and they're pressuring TSMC as much as possible to get the GPU ready because once again they are definitely starting to realize that there's a lot of pressure on them and we all know that most likely the reason that Radeon 7 launched was just to remind people that oh look we actually do produce GPUs guys honest but we all know the story with the Radeon 7 card, and I still don't think it's a bad GPU. Some people are really uh, hammering the card, but I don't think it's bad. I think AMD kind of just screwed up with the launch drivers. I think they should have delayed it a little bit, but that's a story from another day. However, there you go. The release date for the Ryzen 3000, the X570, along with Navi, is scheduled to be July the 7th with the cards, with all of the products being unveiled at CES. Then again, that's not all that we have, because no, 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 I have a little bit more information for you. There is also another processor uh, lineup that AMD are apparently working on. I'm trying to find out more information of this particular product. Uh, it's known as Rhino. I don't have any information aside from the fact that it is targeting the second half of the year. This is purely a guess on my part, but it could be an APU of some description. However, my source did not provide any other information other than to say that he believes there's something called Rhino that is launching in the second half of this year. And uh, he did not disclose any other information regarding that. So I'm gonna try and do a follow-up and find out more information about Rhino. I can't guarantee that uh, any information is going to come my way, but I'll do my darndest, gosh. Anyway, uh, as for other information, because I know that you probably want more, um, what about core count? Well, this is still up in the air. You might recall about a week, two weeks ago, I can't honestly remember, I put out a video that basically detailed that AMD so far had not provided engineering uh, sample processors to AIBs. Basically, AIBs right now do not have engineering sample processors. Uh, Intel are generally a little faster from my personal understanding from people who have whispered in the industry providing engineering sample CPUs, uh, which is one of the reasons, by the way, that typically you see Intel CPUs leak a little more often than AMD uh, because Intel just kind of be like, there you go, there's like, you know, a 25,000, uh, you know, core processor, you try that in this motherboard and obviously I'm being a bit silly, but you get my point. They tried to give the samples a little faster. AMD are a little slower. So currently, uh, AIBs and system integrators do not have engineering sample processes. They apparently are not going to start coming out until around April, possibly a little later than that. However, from the briefings that AMD have provided their partners behind closed doors, 
it would appear there's a couple of things that are becoming abundantly obvious. The first is, as we all know from Lisa Sue herself, uh, the processors that they showed on stage were an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, but there was space for another die. In a follow-up interview later that day, she confirmed that there would be higher core counts available, and since then we've seen that engineering sample processor uh, appear on the user benchmark database, which was once again a 12-core processor, although running at rather anemic clock speeds. From what um, I've been told, all of their partners are expecting AMD to launch a 16-core processor. Uh, so 16 cores, 32 threads for AM4. Um, they know that 12 cores is pretty much guaranteed. We all do. But they are expecting uh, a 16-core, 32-thread CPU. I was also told that uh, when it comes to additional uh, number of threads and the clock speeds that AMD are planning, despite the fact the 7NM process, we can expect power consumption to be kind of high uh, because obviously all of the savings of moving to 7NM is going to basically be eaten up with the fact that they've got more processor cores and targeting higher clock speeds. But right now, the source does not have any information to say this is exactly what it's going to be. Lisa Su, along with AMD and my sources, multiple sources have confirmed that the TDP is essentially going to be identical. It's just not going to be any cheaper, basically, to run in terms of power consumption. And we did see that demo, of course, where uh, the 8-core, 16-thread CPU of AMD's what the engineering sample, Matisse engineering sample, was uh, considerably more power efficient than what we saw from Intel. Uh, I also made a prediction based upon what we know about the IPC of the current Ryzen 2000 series CPUs compared to the uh, i9-9900K. If you clock them at uh, similar speeds, so 3 GHz and 3 GHz or 4 GHz, 4 GHz, we can make an assumption based upon the information that we know regarding the IPC gains uh, and clock speed, but we're looking at around a 12 to 15% IPC, and most likely the engineering sample is running at the very low 4 gigahertz mark at best. 3.8, maybe 4.1, 4.2, but that's not from my source, that's just me kind of ballparking it. I want to be that, I want to be very clear about this. Now, in regards to clock speeds, there has been, at least according to my source, no final speeds uh, mentioned to any of their partners. So these are internal numbers. However, from what has been said, it's almost expected right now that we will see higher clock speeds, considerably higher clock speeds, and basically the platform will be built with the notion of supporting better overclocking compared to previously. So this is definitely a consideration that you might need for either cooling, a higher, a beefier PSU, and all of the other caveats when, of course, it comes to choosing a motherboard and other system components, DDR4, um, for that specific, uh, for that specific fact. So there you go. Uh, that's all the information I have thus far. The normal thing, however, is that this information can change on a dime. Release dates can change. Uh, product plans can change because, well, they never know what's going to happen. Possibly they feel that something needs a little bit more time uh, to mature. And it's most likely that since the whole Radeon 7 uh, incident, where, of course, AMD realized that, yeah, we kind of probably should have optimized the drivers a little bit more, uh, I suspect that AMD will definitely want to hit all things... Uh, I'll try and get all things as uh, smooth as possible because obviously they kind of got crucified in the media with just the drivers alone. And it's a bit of a shame. But I do think AMD as a whole are doing rather well. They are still learning about things and they're still trying to improve things. And that's the same with Intel. That's the same as NVIDIA, Sony, Microsoft, you name it. At the end of the day, although they are massive corporations, massive companies, they also are a whole group of people, and people make mistakes. It's just that simple. But with all of that said, hopefully you found the video fun, useful, informative. If you did, then you can click the like button as well as share the video because that helps the channel out a ton. And you can also subscribe to us as well because, well, that helps promote the channel. You can also find us on social media, which is, of course, linked in the description of this very video. 
and you can also find us on Patreon, Amazon affiliate links if you decide to buy a new Razer or, I don't know, fancy a new TV, then use the Amazon affiliate link and it helps us by giving us a couple of pennies. Don't feel you have to, I'm just saying that it does help us out a lot if you choose to do that. But I'm going to get going and, uh, well, thanks very much for watching the video. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get going so I can do some coughing now. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just managed to stop myself there. All right, take care guys. Bye for now.